Welcome to God is Open. I'm your host, Christopher Fisher. Today on God is Open, we're going to be talking about Deuteronomy 18, a proof text I often hear to question the validity of open theism. We're going to be starting at Deuteronomy 18:15 because I think the context starts here. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, this is Moses speaking, from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. So this is probably like a Samuel figure. It might be a Jeremiah, an Isaiah type figure. It's hard to put your finger on what this is predicting. Some people have it as a Christ-like fi figure that Jesus is going to raise up and people are going to listen to him. I don't know about that, but uh, some sort of Samuel-like figure. Samuel's a decent pick for this. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let it let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire anymore, lest I die. Remember, the people were viewing God and they were in such fear they never wanted to do that again because they felt in mortal danger that they are going to die. And the Lord said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded to him speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. So this is the warning against false prophets. If there's a false prophet, a prophet speaking for Yahweh, who is not speaking for Yahweh, put him down, put him to death. And uh, this is not easy to figure out who's doing what. Um, it, even in the modern world, it's like, oh, who is uh, speaking for Christianity, for God, and who's not? Sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes it's hard to to uh, differentiate the hucksters from, from the true believers. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken, and the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. So what you should do, here's the test. Uh, someone says something's going to happen, and that thing does not happen. That's a false prophet. You could put him to death. But here comes the problem. Because people see open theism, and they say, oh, if God doesn't know the future, then how can any of these prophets be true because it's just a guessing game about the future? Well, um, prophecy is not about knowing the future. That that's, that's one thing that we need to point out right away. Prophecy is about God's current intents based on the current situation. And uh, often, most often, the prophecy is meant to fail. Prophecies are meant to fail. God says, I'm going to destroy this nation. And that nation's like, oh no, we're going to get destroyed. And so they repent, and then the prophecy has to change. Forty days and Nineveh is going to be overthrown. Nineveh is never overthrown. Jonah's not a false prophet. Circumstances changed. Everyone can read the text and understand that uh, circumstances has changed. And so um, there's a reason for that prophecy not coming about as predicted. So common sense it is, is a definite rule that we need to be utilizing here. It's not, it's not a black and white formula because if it was, Jonah would be a false prophet. And Jonah's just stick coerced into being a prophet. He doesn't even want to be a prophet. He doesn't want to be there. And he's forced to prophesy this thing. And then I imagine he gets back to Israel and they're like, okay, we'll plug his name into the formula. There's a prophet that speaks to the name of the Lord. Yep. And uh, the word did not come to pass. Yep. Okay. Guilty. Uh, killed Jonah and uh, he's gone but you know we use common sense when we're dealing with passages of the Bible this is a rule of thumb so people could understand what a false prophet is and a true prophet it's not like they're going to be enforcing this in a formulaic sense they're going to be looking at circumstances if circumstances change then God reserves the right to change his mind and we see that throughout 
So a lot of these rules in our modern society, we, we are familiar with people using latitude to understand the propriety of actions. There's that Texas dad who killed a man, he just went over to him and killed him. Oh, why did he do that? Oh, because the guy was molesting his uh, preteen daughter and no jury found the man guilty. He's not guilty of murder for doing that. Uh, people understand that sometimes there's circumstances that justify violations of rules. Sometimes that, that's, that's how the legal system works. You look at the circumstances to decide whether or not to apply the rules and if it fits. Let's give another example. How about in 1 Kings 22, where God tells all these false prophets and true prophets to prophesy something falsely. In this case, God is actually giving out the false information. And so God's failing his own rule here because the prophet said something in the name of God and, and God had all, all actually given him that information to say, and then it does not come to pass. And so he's not even speaking falsely. He's, he's speaking what he's been fed from God. And uh, God, this is God's words or the, the, this false prophecy. And why was God giving this false prophecy? To set Ahab up for his destruction, for his downfall. Let's turn there real quick. In 1 Kings 22.5, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire first of the word of the Lord. And then the king of Israel gathered all the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go into battle against uh, Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? And they all said, Go up, the Lord will give it into the hand. And then Jehoshaphat presses him to get another prophet. So they find Micaiah. And the king of Israel is like, I don't like this guy. This guy never prophesies anything good. We just, we just like to listen to the people who prophesy the good things that we do like. We don't like this guy. And the king summons him and he says, bring Micaiah. And Micaiah, he's like, yeah, yeah, yep, go, go fight. <laughs> God will give it in your hands. Micaiah says the exact same thing as the false prophets go up and triumph the Lord will give it into your hands and the king he presses him maybe maybe it was the way he said it maybe Micaiah's like yeah yeah go have fun with that uh good luck <laughs> joy to you um peace and blessings go go prosper go do it and uh, he might have detected detected a little bit something in his demeanor and he says hey come on I, I told you to tell the truth here what's going to happen and then he said uh, he spills the beans he, he gives he gives the example of what happened in heaven god is in heaven he's surrounded by the angels and uh, i saw the lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing besides him on his right hand and on his left and the lord said who will entice ahab that he may go up and fall at ramoth gilead and one said one thing and another said another. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and saying, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, by what means? And he said, I will go out and I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, you are to entice him and you shall succeed. Go out and do so. And now, therefore, now this is commentary by the true prophet who had given these words from the Lord. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of these prophets of yours. The Lord has declared disaster for you. And it's not like this is an unprecedented thing in the Bible. Let's turn back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 13.1 If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder that he tells you comes to pass, and if he says, let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them, you should not listen to the words of that prophet or to the dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And so basically, here's the test again. This is a different test. But this test is the false prophet prophesies something that does come true. So it's, kind of, it's problematic. It's kind of easier to figure out if they're a false prophet if it doesn't come true. Uh, but if it does come true, and then he says, let's go worship other gods rather than Yahweh. Uh, don't listen to them. And the reason that he got it true, presumably, the text might be able to be read in a different way, but presumably the reason that the prophecy did come true was because God is uh, trying to figure out if you're true to him. God is testing you to know what's in your heart because God tests to know within the Bible. And so there, there might be another way 
to read this. Maybe maybe um, this is being phrased as the people accidentally got it right or got it right through supernatural, supernatural powers from another deity or something like that. And then the, the last phrase is that God knows that this happened and now he's watching you to see if you're going to follow him or not. I, I assume the most natural re way to read this is that God's implanting this um, true prophecy, the sign or wonder, in order to learn about people. In either case, God is learning about people. God's either using a true false prophet in order to test to know who Israel is, or he's implanting these false prophets with true predictions in order to, or, or signs or wonders, in order to figure out about Israel. In, in both cases, God's learning. But you see how these these things work. These are general rules of thumb. Um, they, they, they fit multiple circumstances. You might have false prophets getting things right. You might have true prophets getting things wrong. You do have to, these are general rules of thumb, you do have to use a little bit of common sense. If circumstances change, the prophet's not at fault. You're not going to be executing a Jonah. You're not going to be doing that because the reluctant prophet gets executed for uh, for making his prophecy a null and void when the people change. Prophecy is meant to fail. Overall, prophecy is God's current intents based on the current circumstances. If those circumstances change, which the prophecy is meant to do that, the prophecy is meant to stir people to repentance, to change their actions, so that so that the prophecy fails. Prophecy is meant to be subverted, and you don't execute those people. Uh, these are general mental rules of thumb for us to try to figure out, to navigate these tricky waters. And it's a complicated thing. It, it's not it's not quite so black and white as people would have it be. Or else, guess what? Guess how many true prophecies I've had on my channel and on my website. I even predicted to the hour and minute the date that I would post a certain post. Wow, magic, right? Anyways, any questions or comments, put that down below. Thank you for listening.